Hi, today we look at the parts of a Lyra gameplay ability, how it is connected, how it triggers effects and how we can use that. We start as always with our process map, staying here and then going down there, implementing a kind of multiplayer template. So at the moment we just have abilities that are defined via the Lyra ability set, kind of fixed. There are better ways. And after that, we go here in the middle to Lyra gameplay ability. We look at the gameplay tags that it uses. There will be other ways to um, grant these abilities instead of putting it fixed into a, a configuration file. For example, we are different blueprint nodes, we are interactions. These are the next videos. So the gameplay ability normally has an animation. It can have animation notifiers. And this will trigger something called gameplay queue notifier. That is normally a visual effect and that is bound with a gameplay tag indirectly to the gameplay ability. The queue can trigger things like force backs, Niagara, sound waves, camera shakes, all these things are defined in this gameplay queue notify. Other than that, the whole thing can also have effects like um, costs or cooldowns. Costs like health that is reduced, cooldowns, couple of seconds before you can use the ability, we will also have a look at that. Let's try to implement the thing. So first thing, we want to have a template that is usable in multiplayer and that will use all these effects that we just pointed out and can be then kind of yeah, used as template for further development. At the moment, we have from the from the last demo video a simple play, gameplay ability, just really playing it, no effects, just the animation, and then it ends the ability. Um, if you look at the glowing ball, that is actually something from the other video, looking if a gameplay effect is um, active or not, sorry, a gameplay tag. And now we will look for new code to fix our deficits there. So right click, open, copy. We delete everything here and just pass it in. There's a function here. You just say create matching function. That's a printout function. And that is something we also have to copy in. Looks big, it's quite simple. I will go through all the steps. Let's look at the printout function, same thing. So right click, new tab, copy the code and pass it in. That's essentially doing four times the same thing, just printing out a lock message in different colors and with different kind of lock levels if you want. Uh, zooming a bit in, you need as a result this enum and then you have things like succeed or failed and aborted and stuff like that. There are a couple of variables missing, just right click create variable and should be another one here, here the gameplay effect, same thing, right click creating it and then it should compile actually. Good. Uh, saving here. So next thing we need to add something to our character class. So let's open our hero class and you know from the last videos here is the yeah, changing of clothing if you want. Here's a spawn event and we have to add something. Let's go to the class settings. We need an interface called BI Emote Audio. So here on the right side, implement interface, just search for BI Emote. And that will make sure that the gameplay abilities audio is actually um, something you can hear. It will create a couple of functions here and we need to store a variable. I copied again the code into the net right click, copy it. And that's another two or three nodes that we need, passing it in, you see it's quite short. And that is just setting that variable that we also, I guess, have to create, yes. So right click, create variable, and now it should actually compile. Good. Let's look at the class defaults, just make sure that you still have the anim class and the skeleton mesh as we said in one of the first videos, that looks good. And I think we are ready to try that out. 
So still my finger shot, hopefully with a bit more effects now. And it's some effects, but not really, really dancing. Uh, I think I missed to actually set the variables that we created. They are still empty. And uh, let's stop that. Ah, yeah. It has no effects. The anim to play is empty. Oops, yeah, okay, let's fix that. So going back to our finger shot and just look at the two variables. We created the gameplay effect. That is something that we take from Lyra. A standard health effect. We will look into that uh, in detail in a couple of minutes. And then the animation to play is still our emote, our finger shot. So again, we select that one. Okay, now it should work. Spawning here. And yeah, let's dance. Looks good. So we have the dance animation, we have a gameplay effect, this green thing, a bit like it's actually a health animation from Lyra, and that looks better. So let's have a look what actually happens here. Good. We start with checking the ability costs, if we have enough resources of any kind to actually do something. If not, we would print it out with our debug function that we just copied in, this one here. And here you have things like succeeded, failed, aborted, or in progress, where you can really just print out the results with different colors, and that is, makes it easy to filter and lock. A very important function is just get actor info in a gameplay ability, because it gives you all the relevant components of the ability without casting anything. It makes it easy for you. And then that's a simple one, just the class name so that we actually can find that filter ability in the log files. And then it's four times more or less the same with different colors, just formatting some text and giving that out. And I actually just see that we forgot to connect the message itself. So it will not have so much value. So let's connect that here. And then our debug function should work as expected. Okay. So yeah, looks better. Let's compile and save. So as we said, we print it out. That's another print out. And here we end the ability gracefully. So everything all right, the ability has ended. Here, the middle boxes are the most important one where things are happening. The point is one of them goes on the server, the other one on the client. The client itself will just um, send a broadcast message how long the ability is going to take. That's the duration of the animation mostly. And here we have two important things. Apply gameplay to owner, a queue to owner, and commit ability. Both are doing the same. They trigger a gameplay effect. Commit ability takes that gameplay effect out of the class defaults. So if you look here on the Lyra cost gameplay effect class, that is what you trigger here. Or you trigger it manually with the apply gameplay effect to owner. Both things to the same, so we trigger it double times here. Then we have a look here at the health system because we say, okay, the gameplay effect will have an impact on the health. It will reduce health. So we get the health component and then we print out the current health. As we trigger it two times and one of them is reducing by one, we expect that the first trigger point will reduce by two. Opening this gameplay effect, that's a very important class that you should study really because it has on the one hand a lot of tags where you can really steer the behavior of it and it references a health set damage class where you can define what the impact on any resource is and you can grant abilities here on the bottom. So that's a powerful class. It's a bit confusing with these many, many tags, but that is definitely something that will steer a lot of logic without coding it. So uh, closing it a bit. Next thing is we execute the gameplay queue. So that's our visual effect on the location of the actor. And that is bound with a gameplay queue game tag. We look at that deeper, then we play the montage. And then if 
the montage is interrupted or cancelled, then the ability is cancelled. If not, we end it gracefully and everything is fine. So let's try it out and let's hope that now the health is displayed properly. So let's go that we see each other. And you see, health is 98, so 2 times 1 is reduced per dance. Try that again, so it's 96. Meaning, 2 times this gameplay effect is triggered and is reducing health here. If I dance with the other one, it's just starting, so from 100, 100 to 98 also looks quite good. One thing you can do here, you can add stacks. That's, yeah, let's add, for example, uh, 50 stacks, so we would expect 50 here and one here 51 is the cost of the ability when i trigger that let's have a look spawning again and let's have a dance yeah 49 so meaning the health is reduced more than half on the second time oh we don't have enough resources so we are dying the health is at zero okay Okay. Stacking is not possible with the commit ability, but it's easy here with the manual effect. So that is something you can definitely use here. One thing that is missing is how is the Q coupled to the ability that goes with one of the gameplay text is gameplay Q character heal gameplay tag. Let's look what it does and where, how it's connected. We just search for references here. And here you see, let's make it bigger. You see this gameplay Q character heal yeah, is pointed from the gameplay ability finger shot and it's pointed from this GCN, so the gameplay Q notifier character heal. Let's have a look into that. That's an interesting class that steers all your effects, your visual effects. And have a look at the class defaults under GCN effects, there you have burst particles, burst sounds, you have also camera shake, you have force feedback, and here are the things that are visible and hearable in your game playability. So for example, let's change that. There is a grenade effect coming with Lyra, a kind of mini explosion. And compile and save. And have a look at Lyra. And now our dance, let's walk a bit here, should have some explosion on it, yeah? And second time. Oops, that was one too many. So very, very easy to change the effects, the, the notifiers and so on. So that's also something that is quite nice. Yeah. We will have a look at other things uh, no, in the defaults. One thing is interesting, that is the cooldown gameplay effect class. So you can set cooldowns. It's also a gameplay effect. We say, okay, it takes 10 seconds to activate again. And as I said, these costs, these are also set here via the gameplay effect classes. So last thing, there are many effects, many gameplay abilities that I actually use. Let's look how that is done. Just open the pawn class. And here you have the Lyra ability set. Opening that. And here, these are just standard effects coming with Lyra finger shot. This is ours. Then we have death, spawn, and jump. And jump is interesting because I took that for checking out the cancellations cancellation tags between abilities. So if you go to jump to the class defaults, here on the right, I define cancel abilities with tag. That is our finger shot. So it will cancel our finger shot ability. So meaning we try it out, we start dancing, we are jumping during the dance, and we would expect that the ability is not ended gracefully, but was canceled. So jumping works, let's dance. And now jumping and you see here on the top left the yellow text animation was cancelled so just using this gameplay text settings quite easy unfortunately a bit hard to debug because um, that is 
a bit missing in the editor. I think that is something that Epic will add in the future. So that should be it for a kind of first template. We will now create a kind of map where we test out different applications of it and see you soon.